you for your word. Thank you for what it's going to teach us tonight. Thank you that you are our good shepherd and that you are in the business of providing for us more than we could ever imagine. Thank you, God, for what you've done. Thank you for what you're going to do in this message tonight. Be with us now. Open our hearts to the teaching of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, church. You can't be seated. So the title of the message uh, this evening is Grace, Grace, God's Grace. Grace, Grace, God's Grace. Like the hymn um, in your hymn book, number 122. Is there a hymn book up here? Let me have a hymn book, please. Yeah. Wait. 122, grace greater than our sin, marvelous grace of our loving Lord. Grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilt. Marvelous, infinite, matchless grace freely bestowed on all who believe, all who are longing to see his face. Will you this moment his grace receive? Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. And aren't you glad, and can you say amen to the fact that grace is greater than your sin? Amen. And that the grace of God extends to forgive your sin and wash your sins clean away from you. Thank God for the grace of God. There's a story about a lady who went to her local bank to withdraw some money from her account. And after having received it from the teller, she proceeded over to another counter and then counted it and then recounted it. And wondering if he had made a mistake, the teller asked, what is it, lady? Is it all there? And the woman snapped back, it just is. It just is all there. So what was that woman expecting the teller to do? Well, I can tell you for sure, I've never worked in a bank, but I've, I've dealt with plenty of banks. Banks, newsflash, banks are not charities. <laughs> If you ask for $50, what do you get? $50. If you ask for $53.96, what do you get? $53.96. No more, no less. They give you exactly what you ask for. Again, no more and no less. The bank, however, of God's grace is not like that. The bank of God's grace is different. It is not marked by exactness, but it is marked by extravagance. God, we have a God who is an extravagant God. God does not dole out his blessings in dribs and drabs. God doles out his blessing, gives away his blessings as much as he can, whenever he can, to his children. That's you and that's me. Thank God again for the grace of God. The psalmist David here in Psalm 23 gives testimony to that fact, telling us that, in, telling us that his life is brimmed over with the favor of God and the multiplied grace of God. So we read the whole psalm for context, but I just want to focus really on one verse, and that would be verse 5 of Psalm 23. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, and thou anointest my head with oil. And here's the key phrase that I want to focus on. My cup runneth over. With what? With the grace of God. With the blessings of God. The overflowing cup that's running over 
pictures the abundant provision of God in David's life. I don't know, you, you probably don't know a whole lot about me. I, I actually grew up in Brooklyn, um, not too far from here, 16th Avenue to 69th Street in Bensonhurst. So um, this is not an unfamiliar territory to me. Um, I have a lot of relatives that used to live in Brooklyn. Many of them are moved away now. We live on Long Island. Um, I've got relatives that are scattered throughout the country, but there was a time when we all lived together here in Brooklyn, in Bensonhurst mostly, Bensonhurst and Bay Ridge. So my grandparents, my father's parents, lived not too far from here on the corner of 23rd Avenue and Benson Avenue. There's a big apartment building there. They lived, that's a four-story walk-up. And they lived on the top floor right in the front of the building. Anyway, I say that to say that after church on Sunday, we would go there for dinner. And Grandma would make something that everybody likes. And she would be very, um, um, she, was a, she was a very giving person, a very generous person. And so if, for instance, you were a fan of the mashed potatoes, all right, and it looked like the mashed potatoes were going to finish, and maybe they did finish, and then the empty bowl got passed to you, well, she would say, wait, don't worry, there's more where that came from. And she'd go in the kitchen and she'd fill the bowl and bring it back, and there was. It, it seemed to be like an endless supply of food. It never seemed to run out. There was always more where that came from. The meat, the vegetables, you know, very traditional meat, potatoes, and vegetables, um, or fish, potatoes, and vegetables, however the case may be. But the food would just never run out. It was like the oil that never ran out. There's always more where that came from. And so that's what she was, was famous for saying. Shepherds in David's day often drew water for their flocks from wells. And some of those wells, believe it or not, were something like 100 feet deep. And the way that they would do that is that they would draw water with a bucket, hand over hand, a leather bucket, bucket by the way, hand over hand on the end of a long rope. And then the water that they drew was poured into stone receptacles beside the well. And so this became a very long and laborious process. Um, if the ship shepherd had a lot of sheep, it would take him a long time to get enough water to uh, give all of those sheep a drink. However, the shepherd did that and enjoyed doing that and was happy to do that. Why? Because of his love for his flock. God, toward, the love of God toward his people, you and me, he gives and gives and draws and draws and gives and gives out of his love for his flock. We don't have to beg God for anything. Do you know that? God is a God who gives and loves to give. Giving is part of the nature of God. And God loves to give to his people. God fills our lives to the brim with his goodness and mercy. Romans 8.32 says, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So in the next couple of minutes, what I want to share with you tonight is what does God give? What does God give and how much does he give? So let me tell you a couple of things that God gives to us. If it's salvation that we need, then what kind of salvation does he give? He gives great salvation. The Bible says in Hebrews 2, verse 3, how shall we escape, how, how shall we escape if we neglect 
so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard you. How, listen, how great is your salvation? It is, is it the greatest thing ever? Amen? Yes. Wait a minute. We're talking about your salvation Amen. here. Is Amen. it the Amen. greatest Amen. thing ever? Amen. Amen. Okay. You, you heard that, right? <laughs> and that's just talking to the pastor for a minute. If it's salvation that we need, God doesn't just give us salvation with a, cap, with a lowercase s. He gives us salvation with an uppercase S, a capital S. And he doesn't get just give salvation. He gives great salvation. I don't know about you, but for me in my life, I needed great salvation. I didn't need just salvation. I needed great salvation. And I'll bet you, if you were honest, and you look at your life, you didn't need salvation either. You needed great salvation. By the way, salvation, all of these things that I'm going to mention to you, are connected to the grace of God. <clears throat> it is by the grace of God that you have salvation. It is by the grace of God that you have great salvation. So if it's salvation that we need, it's great salvation that he provides. If it's grace, grace connected to grace, if it is grace that we require, he makes all grace abound to us in all things. It's not just grace. It's grace greater than our sin. It's the grace that we need. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. So grace that abounds and that abounds to every good work that you do. If it's grace that we require, he makes all grace abound to us. So it's not just your average grace. It's grace that abounds. It's not just your average salvation. It's great salvation. And if it's peace that we need, he not only sends peace because he is the God of peace, he sends perfect peace, absolutely perfect peace. Absolutely perfect peace that we need. Isaiah 26, verse 3, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. God gives us not only the peace that we need in our lives, but he gives us perfect peace. And if we need life, if that's what we need, he gives life more abundantly. John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So not just life, not just life, life more abundant. Life that exceeds life. Life that is better than life, because Christ is in it. And by the way, we're here tonight, Wednesday night prayer meeting. If it's answers to prayer that we desire, God answers above and beyond all that we can ask or think. Ephesians 3.20, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Him, God, is able to exceedingly abundantly answer prayer. More than we can expect. And the answer is going to be better than we expected it to be. By the way, the answer is going to be perfect, whether you think so or not. 
the answer will be perfect because it comes from a perfect God. The well of God's promised provision for us will never run dry. My cup runneth over, over and over and over. It's like when you put a glass under the faucet and turn the water on. The water starts to fill the glass, then it gets to the top, and what happens? It spills over. And it just runs over and over and over and over and over until that faucet is turned off. But God is not like a faucet. God is always, always, always giving. And so there is always more grace to come. There's more where that came from. There's always more grace. James 4, 6 says, but he giveth more grace. He, God, giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Do you want to see the grace of God in your life? Be a humble person. Live a humble life. Don't live a proud life. God doesn't like pride. God hates pride, the Bible says. You live a humble life before God, trusting God every single day, and there is always more Greats. Let me conclude with three quick thoughts. Number one, our plans should take omnipotence into account. Our plans should take omnipotence into account. Jeremiah 32, verse 17 says, Ah, ah Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by the great power of and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. The omnipotence of God sees everything, knows everything, is powerful enough for everything, and knows exactly the amount of grace that you need. Secondly, our dream should not turn back at the border of human imagination. God, again, knows what we need, when we need it, how much we need it, why we need it. He's involved in every circumstance. Genesis 48, 11 says, And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God hath showed me also thy seed. God knows, again, God knows exactly what we need, he knows that we need grace, and he knows how much grace that we need. The last thing I want to say is that our past achievements should never be the benchmark for our future possibilities. Let me say that again. That's kind of a mouthful. Our past achievements should never be the benchmark for future possibilities. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 9 and it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. It's not just what was done in the past. It's what God is going to do in the future. God has enough grace for today. God has enough grace for tomorrow. And every day into the future, God's grace is going to be there. Again, verse 5, Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of thine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over, over and over over and over. When it comes to God's kindness, mercy, and grace, my friend, there is more where that came from. Mark it down, leave it. There's more where that came from.